Welcome back to Blender Frenzy's quarantine series. I'm Justin, and we're picking up right where we left off. If you haven't created this basic toilet paper shape yet, go look at the last video. But in this video, we are going to do some UV unwrapping. But first, we're going to save what we have. So I forgot to save it last time. So I'm going to either go to File, Save, or Control S to save, and then navigate to where you want to save your file. And you can also add a bookmark for whichever folder you're in. And then you can come right back to that. And you can add as many bookmarks as you want. And then I'm going to title this QS Basic UV underscore 0101. I save in iterations like that. So as I save, I can hit plus and I can hit plus or minus on the numpad so that it will save in iterations so that I can always fall back on the previous iteration. So 101 will start there. Save Blender file. Okay, so what is UV unwrapping exactly? We take an actual roll of toilet paper and we unwrap it like this and lay it out flat. So we paint this uh, little design or whatever on there and then wraps back around onto our mesh. But we're not actually going to unwrap the mesh itself. That's why it's called UVs because we have 3D space, which is X, Y, and Z, and then UV space, which is a two-dimensional texture coordinate. That's what they're called. So you're only unwrapping theoretically in order to paint onto a flat surface. But in 3D space, it translates to the 3D model. And you'll see that here in a little bit. So let's go back here to Blender and we're going to select our object and then tab into edit mode and then we're going to select everything and let's go to the UV editing workspace here. Just press the period on the numpad if you have a numpad and I'm going to change that clipping you see that clipping here just press N on the keyboard go to view tab clip start I'm just going to crank that all the way down so that our camera doesn't cut into our mesh there so I have everything selected here and then here is our UVs it's already unwrapped and over here in the data object data properties here are the mesh properties I'm going to go ahead and close vertex group and shape keys. We're going to open UV map and then when you add an object into Blender it automatically has a default UV unwrap and that's what this is right here. So in the UV space here I can click and drag to select all of them. I can press G to grab, R to rotate, S to scale. I'm just right clicking to cancel those actions there and then if I click out it will deselect everything. Now, if I just go into face select mode and just select a face, you can see it just shows that face. If I alt select to select all the way around my mesh, you can see it has all of those on there. Or if I just select shift select, uh, let's actually select one and then shift select a couple of these here. You can see this translate into a flat UV space here. And so if I were to paint in here, it would just paint on our 3D space right here in just these four faces. Same thing here, Alt select around my mesh. You can see those are all squished up there in the UV space. They, they kind of, not only are they flattened 2D, 2D, but they're kind of flattened into a line. Um, and that's as if we were looking at it from one of the side views. So something like this. And I'm gonna come up here and turn on X-ray mode. Now you can see it's kind of like this. And this goes the same for the inside here. So if I select, well, let's turn off the off that and inside there. So here's the inside unwrapped and here's the bottom unwrapped here on the bottom. So hopefully you can kind of see that what we have here in our default unwrap is not good enough because we can't paint on a line. We have to have it unwrapped correctly so we can paint on the top and the bottom on the outside and on the inside. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our UV map and we're make sure it's selected, which it is by default. If I press plus, it'll make a duplicate. I'm just going to double click here and type in new, enter. Um, I'm going to double click this, name this original. It's duplicate. So as I click on these and change the selection, it doesn't do anything over here. Well, it actually does. So if I go to my original and I select everything by pressing A, and then I come over to new and select new, now nothing is selected. Well, I didn't deselect it. The original is still selected and the new is still unselected. 
If I press B to box select these down here, if I click back to my original, I still have everything selected. Same thing, if I take my new and I select everything and I scale this down and I rotate it, I go back to my original, you can see everything is still here as it originally was. So both of these UV maps are completely separate from one another. They don't have anything to do with one another other than the fact that they both point to the 3D mesh. And this little icon here is the render, the active render, set the map as active for rendering, meaning we're choosing which of these UV maps to project in the 3D space. So there's two selection modes here. We have just the UV map selection, which UV map we're using, and then which UV map we're displaying in 3D is this uh, little render button here. But we'll get into that more when we start texture painting. So let's take our new here and let's make sure we have everything selected and let's just make a new unwrap. So in our 3D view, everything selected, press U, unwrap. And that didn't do anything because it just unwrapped it to where we have this unwrap already. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is uh, press U again and do smart UV project instead. And it gives us this option here, and we're just gonna say okay. And now you can see it split up all of our faces into different areas that are flat onto our image here. And so this we could take as our UVs, and then if we started painting in here, we could paint on the top and on the bottom and on the sides and on the inside. So again, it's just like cutting off pieces and putting it flat. And like I said before, if I click back on my original, we still have our original intact. So let's select our new again. Now this unwrap is actually not too bad, um, but as good as this is, we can make it better. The top and the bottom look okay, but the sides uh, are kind of cut into pieces and kind of put all over the place, uh, the sides and the inside. So we want to make the outside one continuous unwrap and the inside one continuous unwrap. And the way we do that is with marking our own seams. So with our new selected, we're going to create a duplicate. And I'm going to just extend this out here so we can see all of them. Double click here and type seams. So this one will be the seams that we create. And now to create a seam, I'm going to go into edge select mode here and select this edge. We're just going to, I'm just going to pick an arbitrary edge at this point to make a seam. So I'm going to right click and then mark seam. Now if I Alt A to deselect everything, you can see this line here is now red and that means that's where our seam is. So now if we go back into face select mode, Alt select, this again is just a copy of our uh, new here. So these two are the exact same thing. The reason we can't see the whole thing right now is because we only have this selected. If I press A to select everything, then it adds everything to that selection. So I'm going to undo that. And then with just those selected, I'm going to press U and then I'm going to just say unwrap and boom. Now it's all one continuous thing. Now it's rotated it, which is a little bit annoying, but it's not in pieces anymore and that's good. Okay. So let's do the same thing with the inside. So I want to keep the seam kind of at the same uh, spot. I'm just press two for edge select and then just rotate around uh, and then select this one. Uh, I don't want to select the top one. I just was using that as a guide so that I am selecting the seam right on the opposite side of this seam. So, all right. So with that one selected, we can right click and then mark seam. And now that one is a seam as well. So going back into face select mode, alt select that ring of faces in, uh, in the inner tube there. And you can see that's kind of how it originally unwrapped it. We're going to do the same thing. You unwrap again. Now it's all one continuous thing. Now this has also rotated it and scaled it out. So I don't know how Blender calculates that. I know you have this little thing down here. You can kind of change things here, which yeah, it's all right. Now you can change the margin. The margin is just, um, you can see if I, increase that margin. It just means the space around the edges. Make sure nothing is overlapping. And that's a, kind of a good practice to do. Um, here, I can just kind of leave this at the, what was it, 0 0.001, because our mesh is not that complicated, and I'm going to be moving the pieces around anyway. Okay, so now if I select everything, you can see we have our, ins our outside, our inside, and our top and our bottom. And that's really all we need. 
uh, for our scene. Now, if we go back to our new, you can see it's our new is still there. That's the first one we did. And this is our individual seams. Now we don't have to do this next step because it's already unwrapped our top and our bottom the way that we want. But just to be consistent, I'm going to go into edge select mode and then alt select the ring around the top and then alt shift alt select the ring around the bottom. Right click mark seam for both of those as well. This also needs to unwrap. So alt and select that and then shift alt to select these and right mark seam. So now the tops and the bottoms of the inside are now marked as well. And now if I select this whole mesh and even though we have it unwrapped already, uh, well, let's go ahead. Let's just uh, create a duplicate just so you can see seams two. And now we, with this one, we can do U unwrap, unwrap them all at the same time. And now boom, you can see everything is unwrapped, the outside, the inside, and the tops and the bottoms. And that was all in one go. So this is uh, kind of the ones where we did it individually. We just selected part of the mesh unwrapped, selected the other part of the mesh unwrapped. Um, and in this one, we um, marked all of our seams and then unwrapped the whole thing at the same time, which is the one that I'm going to keep. So I don't really need uh, the new and this one anymore. I'm going to keep the original just in case. I don't know why, just, you know, whatever, personal preference. So I'm just going to go ahead and select seams uh, and then just delete seams and new. So now we have seams too. You can see it's not really using our space very well. It's just kind of in this corner down here. So I'm going to move these around a bit. I'm going to start with this one, but first we need to figure out what the orientation of this is. Because it's rotated, I don't know what's the top and the bottom. So in order to do that, I'm going to deselect everything here, and then I'm going to come up and press this UV sync selection, which selects everything again because everything here is selected. So if I click out, this selection here is synced with the UV maps and the 3D viewport. So I'm going to go into vertex select mode and then just select a few vertices here on this side. And you can see, I don't see any on the top that are selected now. Uh, so let's rotate around our object. You can see, oh, those vertices are actually on the bottom. So this is the bottom of the mesh. And just to make sure, let's uh, go here and select this side and now you can see those are selected. Now with the seams, we don't really need to see the seams right now anymore because we've kind of already marked them. We know what they are. We've already unwrapped. So I'm going to come up to our overlays here and then uh, right here I'm just going to uncheck seams and then we can see uh, our mesh is just a little bit better that way. So we can see this side is the top. So that means we want to rotate negative 90 degrees. So in order to select this whole island, so these things are called islands, hover your mouse over one of the islands, press L, and you can see you get an error. And that's because it says the select linked only works in face select mode when you have slinks, sync selection enabled. Say that five times fast. So we have to just change to face select mode now. And then in face select mode, hover your mouse over the island, press L, and it will select the whole island. Now we can rotate this and then press 90 minus. You can also press minus first, but you can do it in either order. Enter, and now we can move this up to the top here. Kind of reposition it. It's not moving very. Oh, I know why. I have my uh, snap selection on still. I was messing around with some things earlier, so I had the snap on. Um, okay, so grab, and there we go. Now we can kind of fit that in here. And now if I come to my vertex select mode again and just select the bottom, or let's just select the top, you can see those are on the top, and that's good. Just to kind of give us a similar visual representation of the 3D viewport. Okay, so let's do the same thing. I'm going to select some of these on the top here, and that means this one right here is the top. So we have to rotate this 90 degrees, not negative 90. So in face select mode, L. R90 and uh, back to vertex select mode and just check that those are the top. Okay. Alrighty, so face select mode, L, and then I'm going to just move this up here in the middle like that. And then 
L. Oh, so if I just keep pressing L and hovering over, I'm just going to add to the selection. So I have to click out or press Alt A to deselect everything if I just want to move one of them. So L, G to grab, uh, click L, G to grab. All right, and we still don't have a good use of our space, so I'm going to start scaling things. So this one actually is pretty small. I mean, it's inside here. Not a lot of people are going to see a lot of detail. So I'm just going to scale that down, actually. It's just something about there. Just move that down here. And the outer part is what people are going to see the most. So I'm going to select this island and just scale this. And then I'm going to press Y just to scale it up and down like that. And then just move this down on the Y like that and grab this and move that up a little bit. And we're just going to scale these up here too. Now, uh, I'm going to select both of them. I'm just going to scale those both up kind of so that they're the same size roughly. Um, and then I'll just move them individually back here in our space. All right, so there we go. I'm just going to take this one and just scale it down a little bit so it's not touching the outer sides there. Okay, so now we have UV unwrapped everything in our mesh and it looks nice and clean and it's flat. Easy for us to just paint over the flat image. That's what we'll get into next time. So you'll see me in the next one.